Hey, Phantomaniacs, welcome to review number two in Mad Balls Week. Uh, we've already taken a look at the slip cover. It's beautiful. We love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get on down to business and check out the second Mad Ball in Wave 1, Bruise Brother. The Magular action figure. Body parts interchange with other Mad Balls action figures and with the upcoming Mad Balls versus Garbage Pail Kids figures coming from Premium DNA. Uh, you can visit them at premiumdna.com, which I'm sure is somewhere here on the packaging. Um, eh, maybe not, but whatever the case, that's where you can find them. And I believe, uh, I'm not sure where you can buy these right now. You know how to use Google. Uh, Big Bad is sold out of some of them. Entertainment Earth might still have them. Uh, check around, see if you can find them because these figures are great, as you're going to see in just a minute. Uh, Bruise Brother was not one that I had as a kid, uh, and honestly is not one of my favorite Mad Balls, but I wanted to order this whole set because I was so excited about these. So here he is. In the back of the box, we've got the nice cross sell, tells you who else is available. Got his accessories in here, and a look at the figure himself. But that back of the box is just not good enough for our video. We need to open this guy up and take a look at him. So yesterday I reviewed Oculus Orbis, who's one of my favorite Mad Balls. Uh, I have had, I have owned Oculus Orbis from every Mad Ball series that has existed. Uh, there are some of the original Mad Balls that I never had, uh, but Oculus is the one that I've had uh, the head popping figure, which is what this series is based on, the original ball, uh, and all, all of the remakes, which I still have. So, oh, and you know what? I neglected to mention uh, the Kid Robot Mad Ball offerings that came out a few years ago as well. Uh, I love this tray for the accessories. Uh, they're secured in there. No, well, the only tape is holding the tray into place. Uh, and the accessories themselves, you've got a double tray here to keep everything nice and secure. We'll take a look at that in a minute. For right now, we're going to get this guy out of here and get some good playtime in with Bruise Brother. Uh, again, not not one of the Mad Balls I'm more familiar with. Sorry, I, I uh, left him out of frame a little bit too long. Gosh, I, the feel of these is so good, you guys. Uh they're so nice and thick and heavy and durable. And, uh, I'm, you know, I mentioned they're magular action figures. And what that means is you pop this guy's head off. You pop his arms off. It's a little bandolier there, which is a nice extra piece of business. Look, right at the knee. Okay, now this might be a little tricky. So... Oh, I've, I am seeing the first thing I don't love. Uh, you know, yesterday's Oculus Orbis review was massively positive. Uh, and today, well, I'll go ahead and point it out to you guys. Uh, I'm not loving this flesh colored. I mean, I obviously you can see the paint's just flaking right off there. Uh, I wish they had used blue uh, hinges pegged hinges. I, I don't know the term for this thing, but it's it's a hinge with a peg on it. Uh, I wish they'd use blue instead of the flesh color, because this is just going to look bad for the life of the toy. I don't love that. Uh, and they did the same thing. So here's here's the deal. And, and you know what? I'll go ahead and pull him back out, because he's still right here. Uh, Oculus uses red discs throughout his construction, because his body is predominantly red, and it doesn't break up anything anywhere. Uh, you know, here, whatever. It's because of his design, the red discs really work nicely. Uh, Bruise Brother is a little bit of a different story because he, you know, yes, he is predominantly flesh-colored or Caucasian-colored, pardon me. Uh, but yeah, this part comes apart also. But I'm afraid if I pull this might pop off or this might, he's got a couple of pieces here and I really don't have any good reason to separate the upper torso from the lower torso. Uh, let's see. So anyway, these, these knees, well, and you can see it up here on the hips as well. So 
my guess is that all of these come out of the same tool, which means they need to uh, keep expenses where they need to be, that these all need to be made out of the same plastic. So that's a design call. That's a sacrifice that was going to have to be made. Uh, I don't like it, but it is what it is. So we're stuck with these flesh colored discs and, uh, or excuse me, Caucasian discs that the paint is just going to come off of and not look good. Uh, and there's really, you know, the only way around that would have been to make these blue. But then you would end up with blue discs here and here. Because everyone on the figure, uh, for, for cost reasons, I'm sure, has to be the same. Uh, it is, you know, that's how it is sometimes. So real quick, I want to... Uh, take a look at, well, let's take a look at his head first of all, because obviously these are based on mad balls. Uh, and the original toy was just a ball with a, some kind of hideous, grotesque face on it. Uh, so Bruce brother is, uh, some kind of biker or something. Uh, he's got all kinds of great sculpted detail on his busted up helmet, blood just leaking out of this bullet hole up here on top of his head, uh, random spike sticking out little flathead screw over there. More blood leaking out. I've got some scratch marks here. And I love the way that they've gone in and put this silver in the bottom of the scratch mark to show that, like, the paint... You know, ironically, <laughs> you know, we've got paint... We've got unintended paint loss on the knees. And then we've got uh, representative paint loss that, that looks like it's supposed to look in the helmet. Uh, but anyway, blood leaking. The blood looks fantastic. The sculpt and the paint that they used on the blood is like glossy, so it looks like wet and fresh. Uh, and then on the face itself, he's got this disgusting pus oozing out of his eye, and he's got a clothespin through his cheek. Uh, all right, clothespin, a safety pin. Ditches all over the place. Just really grotesque. Uh, he, he's, like I say, he's not one of my favorites, but he's still wonderful. Uh, look at that eye with the blood just leaking out around his, like, busted eye. Uh, the messed up teeth. And then in the mouth, you can see that that tongue and his gums are also a glossy paint. And then look at his beard and all of the painted detail there. That nice wash to bring out all of that great sculpted detail. Like, that's really fantastic. And then uh, if you want to do a comparison real quick... This is the size. This is not an original Mad Ball. This is one of the 2007 Mad Balls, but they were the same size as the originals. Uh, so you can see a little size comparison. The these guys are slightly smaller if you're looking at just the head, but the head, the original head pop and Mad Balls were were much smaller than this. So not bad, not bad. Uh, let's let's see here. Oh, actually, just as an example of these being magular, if you needed more proof for some reason. There you go. Switch all those parts out however you want. Lots of fun to be had. And that is key, isn't it? Because these are toys and we want to play with them. All right, let's put this guy back together and we'll take a look at the rest of his sculpt because there's a lot to appreciate on him. Uh, you know, I almost feel bad at this point saying that he wasn't one of my favorites because looking at him, uh, much like Oculus Orbis and his accessories, you know, I talked about how much fun the designer must have had working on that guy. Uh, and I do want to mention how relatively easy it is to pop everything back into place. Look, we got a little more paint loss on this leg here, too, uh, because it is not molded in a blue plastic. Not crazy about that, and I'm curious to see how it looks on the rest of the figures. Uh, so let's take a look at this guy. Overall, really interesting. They've got the pierced nipple here. They've got staples, the blood, and again, all of this blood is a glossy paint. It looks great. His rope belt just adds a nice little bit of dimension there. Uh, he's got a little tattoo over here. Another one over here, just blood all over the place. This guy looks like he's been in fights. He's got a steel plate bolted to his back with blood spurting out underneath. Uh, he is, I, I did not fully appreciate the potential grotesqueness of this figure, but he is 
pretty thoroughly disgusting. I, I am impressed with what they've done. We've got the studded wristband, lovely paint job going on there. Uh, another one on the other side. I'm actually a little surprised that those wristbands match uh, with, with as uh, asymmetrical as the figure is in general, you know, with the, this business going on and this over here. I'm a little surprised these are matching, but I like it. I like it. Uh, torn up jeans. You can see the all the detail, the sculpted detail and the painted detail in his jeans or, or dungarees, if you will. Little pocket right there. Uh, tears, blood, just the, the detail is incredible. And this is absolutely disgusting. This might win the prize for most revolting thing I've seen on an action figure. Uh, certainly so far this year, but there's a lot of year left, obviously. The pus coming from under the rotten toenail is just really putting me off my dinner, which I just ate, by the way. Uh, he's got a little blood. That's somebody else's blood, probably, on that boot. And the, the engineer boots uh, are great. So well done. All of the uh, studs and the hoop or the ring right there. Just the detail on this guy is unbelievable. I, I am. He's winning me over, I got to say, big time. He, he's really, they went to town on him. And, oh, I forgot to put his bandolier back on. Uh, I almost feel like they they maybe had something to prove with this guy. Like, yeah, he's not a giant eyeball or a rotten corpse or anything like that. But we can, we can make this biker guy pretty disgusting, too. Just, uh, get, just, just give us, give us a minute. Okay, so. Pretty awesome little figure. I, I am glad I would be regretting it if I had not ordered him to go with the wave. So let's take a look at his accessories now. Uh, so part of the... We'll just dump everything out. Uh, we've got lots of different hand options here. Oh, look at this little detail I just now noticed. Uh, he's got a little bandage going around his thumb right there. And I noticed it because he's got... The same bandage on this hand. So he's got a couple of pointing hands, a couple of, let's see, oh, there's the other one, a couple of relaxed hands, and a couple of grip hands to interact with the accessories. And you can see he's got a knife here, really mean looking knife, great sculpt. And look at that little skull sculpted into the hilt, or the pommel, and uh, fantastic. But going above and beyond, look at that storage for that knife. That's fantastic. Uh, and I realize, you know, we, we see that on all kinds of action figure lines. Yeah, but this is something a little different, something a little weirder. Uh, I think to throw that that sheath back there for the knife was just a really nice touch. I love it. Uh, so what else does he come with? He's got a lot of stuff. He has a grotesque boxing glove with a tooth, two teeth embedded in it. Uh, I think that's going to be a permanent addition to this guy. Uh, I love the way that look at another tooth. It's all sewn up. Just the all of the detail on these things is absolutely incredible. So let's pop this hand with its little thumb bandage off. And uh, we're going to put that boxing glove on this guy. Even though it doesn't totally make sense for a biker to have a boxing glove, I also kind of don't care. Uh, and while we're here, while we've got him back in the frame, we'll go ahead and put one of those C-grips on him so we can have him interact with the accessories in a second here. Uh, we do have a little bit of a loosey-goosey joint. He's not going to be able to hold that uh, boxing glove up necessarily. But that's not... Uh, it may be a problem for you, not a huge deal for me. Uh, well, and look, there it is. I mean, it's it, it's fine. It's good. Gosh, I, I love just the thickness and weight of these guys. It's fantastic. So uh, he has a bat with nails and screws and teeth embedded in it. Of course, you got to have a bug on there. I'm going to move him out of the way so we make sure the camera focuses on this bat. Uh, a little bug on there. The, the sculpted tape around the handle. 
somebody took a bite out of it and left a tooth behind. What a fantastic accessory this is. This is unbelievable. I've got a screw sort of bent down here. And then we've also got a beehive on a stick. Because what would be, what would you rather get hit with? This bat, I mean, that would be horrible, don't get me wrong. Or a beehive on a stick. I'd rather get hit with the bat, quite frankly. Look at the honey dripping out, all the little bees all over it, looking all creepy and gross and insectile. Uh, and I love the detail of the honey dripping out and then the stick just poking out through the top with the pointed end. So it's not like it, you, you can see how this happened. He just broke this branch off, jammed it through that beehive, and now he's running around waiting to whack somebody in the head with this thing. This is the, the imagination, the ingenuity, uh, the creativity that went into this line is just absolutely delightful to me. I love this kind of gross stuff. I love this kind of weirdness and the fact that they got this done, that they made this happen. And I know it had to be difficult for these guys. Uh, it was frustrating as it was as a customer. I know it probably wasn't a cakewalk for the people involved in the creation of these figures. Worth it. Absolutely worth it. Uh, please go online and look these guys up. Find yourself a mad ball. Even if you just pick one out to get it in hand, do it. You will, you will thank me. Uh, and, and leave a comment doing so. I like to interact with you guys in the comments. So there you go. Bruise brother from the mad balls. Uh, please like subscribe, share, tell your friends about needless things. And, uh, you know, next video comes out tomorrow. Don't be late. Right? Right. Smash that like button if you like needless things.